Talk to us a little bit about T2, because you're really one of the first people that I have heard talking about this. When we were in London, I think you were we were talking about your supplement line and you were saying, hey, this has actually existed in the bodybuilding world forever. And not that I think we should take everything from the physique building community, but they're often first line because they're often trying to find, you know, they're all, they've always prioritized protein, which has sort of now come out into the masses. Like that's what we should be doing, right? Even when they get up on stage, it's like they're still having a ton of protein so they can maintain at least some of their muscle mass while they're dieting down. And you were talking about T2 really being something that's used or con- ha- was and maybe continues to be used in the bodybuilding community. So talk to us about T2 what it is and why it differs from the other active form, T3, which most of us are very familiar with. Yes, yes, yes. I love T2. So research has been out on T2 for 30 years, which is why it blows my mind that we're not hearing more about it. So research for 30 years, I have been researching it for about 15 years. So my first exposure to it was around 15, 20 years ago in the bodybuilding space because it was only present in like the bro science formulas, the the products that are really geared toward bodybuilders and powerlifters. And you know those products. The SARMs and the... Angry names, <laughs> right? Like yeah, the yeah, SARMs. Yeah, and yeah. and it, it is funny, to your point, I do joke that bodybuilders are the OGs of biohacking because yeah. they slash... Well, creatine, where did creatine come from, right? Exactly. It's like we... Yeah, it's just like, it's the, it's the orange bros at the gym screaming at the weights. Oh yeah, we were using creatine, gosh, back in the 90s. Yeah. And and now we're seeing it come for come out in in the world for menopausal women and all the benefits. Yeah. So yeah. it is. Yeah. It's crazy. But 15 years of research that I've been doing on T2, and it is fascinating. So first of all, it is a thyroid hormone, like we said. However, the really interesting component to it is when you take it, it does not act on the thyroid gland itself. So when we take T4 and T3... We have the natural, normal feedback loop that occurs when we take any hormone, where we take the hormone and then it sends a message back to the hypothalamus and pituitary saying, hey, there's enough hormone in the system. You can stop telling the thyroid gland to make hormone. Or if you're taking testosterone, you get that negative feedback loop. So you stop producing your own And nine times out of 10, that's fine because your body isn't producing enough of its own anyway. So that's why we replace hormones. But the fascinating thing about T2 is it does not have that negative feedback loop on the system to where if you take it, it's going to shut down your own thyroid glands, natural production of thyroid hormones. So it doesn't do that. It works at the mitochondrial level. So in doing that, it's going to increase ATP production. So number one, it's going to make you have really nice, steady energy through the day. Not a stimulant energy, not a fat burner energy from back in the day where we took fat burners and thought we were having heart attacks. No cardiovascular effect, no stimulating effect. It, since it's working at the mitochondria, it just produces that smooth energy, steady energy through the day. But that's not even the best part. The best part is that it increases your basal metabolic rate. So it's increasing the amount of fat that you are burning at rest, increasing thermogenesis. And it does this in a couple of different ways. One of the mechanism of action is that it browns white adipose tissue. So, you know, we're all jumping into cold plunges to to stimulate our metabolism. But what cold plunging does is it literally browns that white adipose tissue. So the white squishy adipose tissue that we grab, we're like, I don't want this on my body anymore. Or the white adipose tissue that's encompassing our organs, that visceral fat. We ultimately want to turn it brown. And when you say brown adipose tissue, people go, well, I don't want any adipose tissue. What, what, why do I want to turn it brown? Because in turning it brown, it becomes more metabolically active. That fat becomes full of mitochondria, and it actually helps us with insulin resistance. It helps us with thermogenesis. So we want to brown that white adipose tissue. The other thing that T2 works on is it, it stimulates mitochondrial uncoupling. And when we do that, we activate thermogenesis. Thermogenesis is the burning of stored body fat. So as you increase your resting metabolic rate, your RMR, BMR, basal metabolic rate, resting metabolic rate, you're burning more calories at rest and you are inducing thermogenesis, that that heat, that burn. 
that taps into our fat stores and burns them for fuel. The other really interesting thing about T2, and this comes back to the interview that I, I told you about that I saw years ago. This is an interview of one of the trainers to the professional athletes in the bodybuilding, fitness, and figure world. So he is training these top level competitors to get on stage at their, their best self, the most muscular yet most lean self possible. And he says, I don't let my you I don't let my athletes use T3. Now, side note to that, why am I saying that? Because in addition to bodybuilders being the OGs of biohacking, they also experiment on themselves sometimes to the negative. And yes, it's widely known when I was competing, many people would use T3 to burn body fat, regardless of whether they had a thyroid problem or not. They would just add it in because T3 does stimulate the metabolism. So it helped them burn more body fat. He says, I don't let my athletes use T3 because number one, T3 does not differentiate between burning body fat and burning muscle. It is going to burn both. So you have these athletes that have busted their butts for 12, 16 weeks, trying to keep on all the muscle that they busted their butts for for the last nine months, trying to keep on their body and build. And now you're going to take something that burns that muscle off. Yeah, it's going to burn body fat too, but you're going to burn your muscle. He said, the other thing is, they're going to come out the other side of this show with a thyroid problem. And I think you and I have both seen, especially the girls after a show, and they look gorgeous before they're stepping on stage. And you see them two weeks later walking on the treadmill, they are 30 pounds heavier. And because number one, their body just rebounded from that strict dieting. And number two, they've given themselves a thyroid problem. So now they have no metabolism left whatsoever because of using and abusing T3. He says, I give them T2. And when I dove into the research on T2, I'm like, oh my gosh, he's right. It will only target body fat. It leaves muscle alone. So we actually can say that T2 is an exercise mimetic because when we look at what exercise does, it burns body fat, it increases our thermogenesis, it builds mu lean muscle tissue, improves insulin resistance, improves our lipid profile, improves fatty liver disease. And then we flip over to T2 and we go, oh, look, T2 does all of that as well. So it acts like an exercise mimetic while leaving muscle alone and only targeting body fat. So why, okay, so I have several questions about this. So whenever we think of sort of the intelligence of the body, we have T3, and as we've talked about, there's this feedback loop. We have this mirror in reverse T3 where, like you said, if there's an accident or we don't want to be really concerned about metabolism, there's this sort of break, right? There's like this inactive or mirror form of T3 that we call reverse T3 that we've been talking about. Is there an equivalent with T2? Like, do we have like a reverse T2? And is there any way that we can, you know, you, you talked about it as an exercise mimetic, but exercise, just like exercise, you can overdo exercise. So is there sort of an area, again, same kind of question, area under the curve where we can sort of maximally profit from some of the benefits that you're talking about with T2, but is there a point where we can overdo it? Mm, that's a great question. So I always go back to the literature. And when I look at the dosing that they used in the human studies. So we have some on rats. That's great. That's where they started. They moved on to humans. In the human studies, this is where we found an average of a nine pound weight loss in 28 days and an average of 4% body fat reduction in 28 days. Now that's the average. Remember, some are much lower. A few people are higher. The dose they were using was between 150 and 300 micrograms. So I always tell people just stay. We know that 300 micrograms is safe. I have not seen any studies done above that. And the interesting thing, when I look at the literature, there are no, no undesirable side effects. And that's literally a quote from one of the studies. No undesirable side effects. So it does not affect the cardiovascular system. It doesn't have that negative feedback loop on the thyroid. Now, again, I've not seen anything that said, hey, let's use 800 micrograms and see what happens. I don't know if there would be side effects there, but just in the use of T2, just use it responsibly, stay under 300 micrograms. So when I put those into my products, because I'd studied it for so long, I'm like, ah, I need to bring this to the masses. I can no longer tell a 40-year-old woman 
to go buy a bottle of something that has an angry gorilla on it. Like she's right. I know. It's like massive gains with a Z. Gorilla cannibals. And, you know, I mean, it was just crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the product was actually called like Cannibal Claw or whatever. Oh so I, I'm like, okay, I need I need to to can we just feminize can we make this a little bit gentler for like the women? Just yeah. A little bit. Just yeah. So I knew when I put it into my products, I, I capped it at 150 micrograms for a serving. And I get this question all the time. Like, I, so I, I put it in thyroid fixer, metabolism fixer, and I get this question, well, can I take both? And I say, you can take one serving of each, but not higher than that, because then you're going over that 300 microgram and we just don't know. We just don't know.